My people always say, and I seriously believe in that, that the hand that is busy, the hand that is dirty, is also the same hand that will cause the oily mouth. Meaning that if you work, you earn. If you earn, you eat well and live well. Today is that day we will be discussing how to make extra or even how to change or how to begin any new sources of income. My name is Elizabeth and the program is Conversations. How do I say? I just say welcome and sit tight and uh, watch us tell you a whole lot you need to know about making money. A lot of times we believe that it is all about the very professional thing they ask us to do. And I want to recall how many of us went to school when you were asked, what do you want to do? Doctor, lawyer, blah, blah. You know, the usual thing. But do you know that there is a whole lot happening in the arena of earning a living outside the big five? Yes, that's our topic for today. And uh, seated with me today are people who are sh going to be sharing a lot of experiences around making money outside of those uh, very known profession. Let me start with the lady who is quite regular at home. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. My name is Deva Hamachin Mom. Okay, and seated right. Good morning. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. My name is Jesse Fande Mom, and I specialize in gaming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm interested uh, in that thing because you're, you're trying to educate me somewhat. Yes. I'm not sure I've actually captured all of it, but you're no. going to do that for me. Yes, I stand on by. Let me go to my left here. Good morning. My name is Maimuna Omi Abdullah, a.k.a. Coach Didi. Okay. Good morning. My name is Mary Ukbe. I'm a lawyer, not a fashion designer. I'd like to call myself a tailor now. Ooh, fashion designer, but you prefer to call it tailor. You know, you remind me of the days when we used to go to tailors, because now people that are so clear no longer see themselves mm -hmm. as tailors. They always say they are fashion designers, and I keep wondering the difference, you know. Perhaps in the course of the uh, program, we we'll also get educated. But I know that um, a lot of times in our lives, we keep wondering, what do I do? It's not just wondering. And a lot of times, I see young people walk up to me and say, I have finished school. I don't know what to do. And I always give them certain part, uh, certain kind of advice. There's a whole lot of money resting around you. All you need to do is open your eyes, look around, and use your fingers. What are those other mo uh, money-making ventures we can get involved in as leisure, as hobby, but then rolling something into account? My winning team took time and packaged a little bit out of a whole lot. Let's see this. Our unemployment rate is on the rise. But do you know that you too can do something about it? Create jobs for yourself and for others. Ask me how and watch our list of some of the things we can do on our own with little or no capital. Fashion designing. The first on our list of self-employed jobs in Nigeria is fashion designing. This is one of the trending industries in the country as people will always want to look good. Once you are creative in producing new designs for your customers, then you are on your way to success. There are many fashion design businesses you can start in Nigeria and earn big. Nigerians have a sense of fashion, so if you are into the fashion business, then you should keep on going as it's a very lucrative business. There are lots of ways you can make money as a fashion designer, such as modeling, clothes designing, marketing, and even helping people get clients. Laundry and dry cleaning services. Another self-employed job in Nigeria that is lucrative is the laundry business. Many people are too occupied with work that they do not have enough time to wash their clothes. Starting a laundry business is very cheap and easy, unlike the fashion designing business. You do not need heavy equipment and machines. All you need is space, some clothes hangers, and of course, a good eye for clean and crisp clothes. Graphics Design This is another self-employed job in Nigeria that you should consider starting. 
When doing graphics design for people, you don't need a shop as you can work from home. This job is demanding, so you are required to learn and master skills in graphics design. If you can create an amazing design that people can like and patronize, then I think you should turn into a full-time graphics designer if you are doing it part-time. Young people live on their phones and computers. Why not go the extra mile and make a living there? Baking and Catering Baking and catering business is another self-employed job you can start in Nigeria. With occasions and parties happening on the daily, you will surely get work every week. If you can bake good cakes and other edible snacks, that is a sure bet as people can patronize you as people now prefer to eat snacks than normal food in the afternoon. Starting a baking or catering business is a sure bet to be gainfully self-employed and it's also a source of generating income. Once your business grows, you can then employ other youths to help you. Organizing events Becoming an event planner is gradually becoming one of the best self-employed jobs in Nigeria when many people looking for means to plan their occasions. If you are good at planning things, you can help other people plan their weddings, traditional marriages, birthday parties, burial ceremonies, and even housewarmings. There are many event planners who charge 1 million naira as a service fee, some even higher. But the good news is you can always lower yours as a starter and still make lots of money once you deliver well. Photography. Starting a photography business is one of the best self-employed jobs in Nigeria as there are lots of occasions for you to attend and many people would like to keep the memory alive. So if you are good at taking shots of people, then this job is ideal for you. It's easy to start as you'll be needing only a digital camera and a laptop to design the pictures. Starting a hair salon. People used to shave or barb their hair to look beautiful and modest. Some even wear wig to add some color to their beauty. A hair salon is a fashionable place where people meet to socialize and get their hair styled. Long ago, the saloon business was only for women. But now even men can join in the business. To be successful in this business, you must have a business plan and a good strategic location to establish this business. Cleaning services. This is one great and new source of livelihood for a lot of people, especially in the city. No certificate or special skills needed. Some cleaners charge as much as 30,000 Naira for deep cleaning of a five bedroom apartment. Once clients gain your trust in their personal space, there is no end to the amount of money and referrals you will get. In conclusion, white collar jobs are fast disappearing, but we still need to exist and exist well. It's time to think outside the box. Go out there, start small, or surely build your own empire. Now that is just a bit of what we can do outside the usual, you know, profession. And while it was going on, a lot of us were discussing it here. A lot of things came up, and uh, I recall uh, you saying that um, the graphic design is a yes. very important component yes. of gaming. Very important. But before I even go into gaming, uh, the components parts, mm -hmm. I want you to, uh, you know, guide us more into what gaming is because okay. I recall. Um, at a point, anytime children carry or youth mm -hmm. carry laptop, we get really angry. Mothers, drop that thing, you're wasting your time. I don't yes. know if anybody had that experience. Yes. And at a point, even you know, you go out with your laptop, the police will always, you know, uh, think you're doing a, a fraudulent business with it. Mm -hmm. yes. But I see now that a whole lot is happening around there to make money. Share some of that for us. Okay, so firstly, I would like to start with uh, expanding knowledge on the basic, the very foundation of gaming. So, gaming in its own is the simple practice 
of uh, is a simple practice of just uh, of interacting with with um, with, with the designated software world like digitalized. While the aspect that I come in is professional gaming, which which is doing that for a stick. So uh, so and then after that, uh, I would like to go into the into the aspect of of laptops or, or just the electronic devices you you, you speak about uh, laptops so basically it yes it starts from from the very interest it comes from the laptops the consoles so so many things uh, but then after the laptops it's it's developed and it's broken down into yes. more basic versions such as mobiles like mm -hmm. mobile devices tablets like and, and, and so on so so that's that's especially especially for Nigeria as well for Nigeria where uh, you where not not everyone is privileged enough to to be able to to buy a high-end a high-end PC going going from the range of 800,000 to 1.22 million so that's so that is a cap in Nigeria right now so the mobile gaming community is is a very lucrative is, is a lucrative and uh, and an, an interesting complex complex system that that Nigerians have to look into and have to it's really, it's really you, know, you say yeah. gaming is lucrative, and yeah. I'm wondering. Sorry, I might be wrong. Mm. When again, I think about gaming, I think about bet this, bet that. <laughs> no. No. I, I, don't you guys think yeah. the same? Yeah. No. So, but um, now you're telling me it's a mm. different thing entirely. It's, it is a different thing. When you say lucrative, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching us want to know um, how much is inside. Uh, uh, you know, how much can I make on okay. a sharp sharp base? Yes, okay. So, it goes like this. So, um, personally, from from my experience, because mm -hmm. I've, I've I've been there, um, you have you have contracts, you have contracts. So you so you as as a player, you as a player, you can you can get um, you can get put on a contract where you get paid monthly, or or they, they cover certain services for you. For instance, uh, <laughs> I've been on a hundred dollar contract. A hundred dollar contract per, per month, where, where they where they agree to also pay for my my internet, they agree to pay for my for, for my data, things like that. For and and uh, they're still giving me a hundred dollars. Yes, yes they're, they're still giving me a hundred dollars. We're talking about seventy something thousand. Seventy five Q. Yes. And then you all oh, your internet, yes. everything was yes. paid. And then and okay. then also. And then, then, then I are listening? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What to do I said I don't have to do And then. And then also, and, and then also, so so you have so you have the contract aspect. Okay, so you have the contract aspect. You have the the, the sponsors aspect. Um, that like for instance, that there was also this uh, there, there was this advert advertisement that I did for Monster Energy Drink on 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 a cup called Deca Cup. So you have the contract, you have the the sponsorships, and then you have the the main one, which is the tournaments. So. Uh, the, the tournaments go like this gaming in, in gaming everything has a hierarchy you have you have the, the starting of the starting of or, or on round which is called tier three tier tier three is where you pick the interest and and, and, you, and you start understanding you have a deeper understanding understanding of this of this game that you're on or and you're active on and then you have tier two tier tier two is is, is where you, is where you start to get to a level where 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 they, they actually start start looking where uh, these these professional teams start start looking into like oh he might be worth something and then you have tier one where where the real where you've you've honed your skills so much and then that that's where the biggest tournaments are for instance uh, the biggest tournament in, in tier one Nigeria last year last year um, is called Contender okay. on, on Call of Duty Mobile uh, the prize pool was twenty five million naira. Entire. Yes, twenty-five million naira plus uh, the the plane tickets were all were all paid for, uh, the hotel rooms all paid for. So uh, yes, internet, everything like that. So yeah, <laughs> there's <laughs> money inside. There's a lot of <laughs> okay. there's money. Okay, there's so money. how much do you make averagely in a year? Ah. In a year? Mm. Last year, pay. last year collectively as a group, we made about two million naira. Did you show uh, how many how many people are in the group? Uh, about about ten to fifteen, about ten to fifteen, because you have because you have coaches. It's, it's just like a football club. You have wow. coaches. You have you have, you have the, the the people by by the side that that I am tell tell the coaches. This player he he needs to to work on his on 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 how he he approaches this situation. So 
<laughs> it's it's really shocking that that I am hearing gaming being told thought about it because it it shows like uh, Nigerians we we need to have a step back and and really look look at it like what what actually goes on. So um, think of it as I, I would like I would like to make people think of think of gaming as 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 this professional gaming as this. So. Okay, yeah. I'm going to let you take a breather yeah. and uh, get to see other aspects of uh, any money. But I noticed that while you were talking, especially while you were talking about the much money you were earning, your mom, Devon, was like, oh my God, you earn this kind of money, I don't know about it. <laughs> so, for one thing, at least, it explains why he's always locked away in his room. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, okay. the thing is, for me, like, when he was in secondary school, mm -hmm. like, I'm not that kind of person who gets too worked up about involvement with electronic gadgets or watching TV or things like that. But I'm also the kind of person who feels like there should be compartmentalization. Like, okay, this is during the week when you're going to school, I want you to disengage from the gaming thing, mm -hmm. focus more on your academics. Then during the weekend, you can spend time on your gaming during the holidays, public holidays and things like that. So for me, that was where the tension used to come from. Like, okay, too much time is being spent on this gaming thing. It's going to affect your academics. academics. Mm -hmm. but, I'm not, but I know that there are parents that get, that mm -hmm. won't buy you that thing. They will afford, they can afford it, but they won't buy it because they see it as a complete waste of time. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it wasn't that. It was like your capacity to, because these things can be addictive. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yes, just like yeah. social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I used to worry about the impact it would have on academics, you know. But it was able to carry it to carry both uh, along. So. Not, um, are you studying architecture? So I'm studying architecture. Okay, thank you. I know that uh, my friend, Miss Mary, studied law. And practice. And practice, practice law. And at the moment, you're into fashion design. Please, how did water enter the... <laughs> <laughs> When you ask how, I think I've always had two passions, law and fashion, mm -hmm. right from when I was a child. As a child, my father called me his lawyer, but my mother was into tailoring. I should have this uh, sewing machine under a tree, hmm. and then she would sew close and hang them on the branch of, of the tree. tree. And so I would sit beside her and sew close to my baby doll. So I um, always had this interest, going through school, secondary school and all that. Then we used to call it uh, middle work, clothing and textile. So I went into that area, I studied a bit of that for secondary school and then the interest had been there. But then the overriding one, being a lawyer, uh, I went through the law school, practiced law in the various aspects of law, banking, official, uh, private practice. And I just actually just retired uh, as a director legal. So, um, the while you were at it, you were always uh, touching your trade and needle? Yes, constantly. I've always made my clothes. Oh. I've always made my clothes. That's and good. then. Um, all those your black clothes? No, the black ones. I, I don't only make those ones, but anything social. I was making them. Now, um, a few years to my retirement, I I now established a, a sewing house for my daughter-in-law. You know, as a civil servant, they say you can go in, only into farming. And since I'm not inclined to farming, I established that for my daughter-in-law, who is a microbiologist. And yeah. she went into fashion. Hmm. And she began to run the fashion house. And honed her skill, went through the fashion schools and all that. And so I would step in from time to time. Like I said, I like to call myself a tailor, not a fashion designer. designer. Mm -hmm. um, because designing entails that gift of creativity, creating something new. So, creating something new is done by my daughter-in-law and the other people. I do. 
when you come in, you pick the two ends of the fabrics and just and so pick them I together. call myself a tailor. A tailor. A fashion, a fashion designer. designer. But I have a fashion house. So the, yes, that is it. And um, talking of them um, moving from, how did I have uh, uh, done this thing side by side over time? What was the name of the fashion house? Rose and Abel Fashion. Rose and Abel Fashion. Now, my question again, because our topic is how to make, you know, a living out of whatever we do, do you think that the fashion house is making enough money to pay staff and then uh, leave some change in your account? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think Abuja, Obea City, has a population of about maybe 4 million. And um, you have maybe about uh, 200 conservative or let's say, no, let's make it more, about 200,000, let's say 200,000 tailored fashion houses. Mm -hmm. So you can see that mm -hmm. the sky is large enough. And Nigerians are fashionable people. Very, very. And you know, fashion <laughs> designing is the first profession on this earth. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, when Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve. They were stuck naked. And covered themselves. That was the first fashion. So they were the first fashion designers. Oh, wow. That's true. That's true. That's true. And then of course the second profession, the legal profession. Why did you do this? And uh, this is not a legal defensive. Okay. Advocacy. So mm -hmm. practice. Both. Have you seen how she managed uh, to bring it? They are doing so, it. To bring in your fashion, I am not going to argue that. Otherwise, I'll tell you that right from time there was hide and seek in the garden, and there, there was media. You don't make money there, 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 there was media. You know, there was broadcast. There was media at the point of creation. But let's not go there. <laughs> I'm so what you know, Coach Didi. Your profession is um, a very tight, very close one. I'm not going to talk about your profession, but I also know you had side. You have side things you're doing. Maybe not even from your own. What are the other things you've observed? You talk with a lot of people as a counselor. How do you help them, you know, uh, exist enough to make small change? Well, um, are we talking about kids or just everybody? Everybody. Well, there are a lot of people who are like 60 years and uh, they're still looking for how to make ends meet. Well, most times I usually, there's this thing called Ikigai, a reason for being. I, I use it for my retirement uh, training. Mm -hmm. It stems from knowing what you love doing. Okay. Everybody has something they love doing. They can do it with their eyes closed. And that same thing could be something they are really good at, it is a skill. It can help humanity, and then it can bring them money. So when it all comes together, it becomes your really ikigai, your reason for being. So I, I do these trainings on, uh, for people, especially those uh, who are about to retire, actually, to find what it is. Because there's always something you can make money. But the thing is, you have to ask yourself, what am I good at? What can I do with my eyes closed? Let me give you an example. For me as a child, I remember this. Ah, um, you can take a suit. Like, um, ah, you can't talk too much. And today I make money talking. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so today you pay me to come and talk. So everybody has a skill. Some, some of the skills are inbuilt. Some of them we have to acquire. So go and get a skill. Have a side hustle. You cannot live in Nigeria right now and not feel the crunch. Things are, uh, are expensive. There's inflation and there's really no money. So for most of us who are how can you cope? So if you don't have something you do by the side, I don't know how you can cope. Actually. So you have to have this conversation so that we can create awareness. You can do something. That means like, I don't know what I can do. I cannot do anything. It's not possible. You know, there are some people that actually do not want to do anything. That's my take. Mm -hmm. They just want you to give because a particular lady will always come in and ask for something and whatever I could afford, I'll give, I'll give it to her. Then at a point, Someone needed a cleaner just to clean the exterior of your place and they're going to pay you know sizable amount of money. So I thought about her. I said, why don't you come in, you know, do this job, you sweep out the place and mop out between uh, 6 a.m. and 7.30 when they go to work. And you're going to be paid 25000 every month. You're not even going to pay transport because it's not too far from where you live. She said, okay. I waited for her. I told the man to wait that I've gotten somebody. Do you know, after one week, that lady never got back to me. When I called, I said, what is the problem? Why don't you come and take it? Auntie, me, I'm not sure I'll be able to wake up by 6 o'clock. Oh. Haba. Haba. I, I used to wake up that time, like 4.30, 4, 
So I'll be here by 6 because we need to do AM Express by 6.30. And out of the small money they pay me, I was giving you small. And I'm calling you to come and do your MB to say you're not sure you can wake up by that time. Mm -hmm. So I'll just let that go. But anyway, I know that uh, you're into arts as well. Yes. You know, I know I think about Devon. Mm -hmm. I try to find out what does she do? What does she not do? What does she do? <laughs> and then when I line them, there are so many of them. Yeah. Yes, that's and it's 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 it can be a problem. It can be a problem. Um, I'm interested in and good at quite a wide range of things that I like a lot. Now it's a problem because trying to disengage and then focus on one thing and you know like really is is a problem. So based on that, I low key regret leaving paid employment because you know I had you know just show up somewhere, do my bit. I knew what I was supposed to do when I got there, get paid, leave. Now that I have my own time to do my own thing, I'm like okay, okay, I'm I'm a fairly good fine artist. Oh, but I'm also a very good public speaker. Let me just be doing my MC something. I know I can write. I can write. You know. Okay, no, maybe let me be doing some consultancies. I have broad experience in development sector work now. No, no, let me just go back to TV work. I'm a camera. So I, then I become distracted and, oh Lord, what am I? And it's, it's quite, it's, it can be a problem. My, my background, I, I, I read mass communication and went into the field. I worked at NTA and all that. So that's my background, media, communicator, journalist whatever and that's the sector I've worked mostly in even after I left NT but when it comes to other things that I can do and like doing I can handle the camera I can do video editing I, I'm a good MC I do visual arts you know and for the arts mostly because I don't sell it and I don't do it on a professional at a professional level I didn't get like um, formally trained beyond secondary school <coughs> in any kind of fine arts. It's mostly... I, I wish uh, the director actually has a bit of some of this, uh, your artwork, so we can have it on and display. So right, if you have them ready, then we can have them on display, some of those fine artwork. <laughs> like uh, lately, over time, you know, my daughter is somebody who has strong interest in fine arts too, although she's a lawyer, you know. so. She would do her paintings. We have like a whole wall in the house where, you know, yeah, at the back yeah, of the cool. house and, and all of that. So it, it began to remind me that when you were in secondary school, you were quite a good artist. So in fact, that was where my attention was. Um, so I started, you know, trying my hands out. And lately I was able to, you know, get some things going. And I've been able to sell like two. So but because have I you, don't have you talked about no, have you thought about um, doing um, well, exhibition? Oh if yes, I participated. Just... You know, when when I decided to revive that part of my life, you know, I would share, I would, I would do my small small paintings and share on Facebook. And a friend was like, "Oh, my church is hosting an exhibition." It, it happened to be that month, so I quickly rushed and put together some paintings. In fact, they were not even very. Mm -hmm. dry mm -hmm. by the time I exhibited them. So yes, I took part in a family worship uh, um, exhibition last year. They had a name for it. And so I've had, I did an exhibition. I, I took part in an exhibition, yes. yes. I, think, yeah. I think an important part uh, or aspect in this conversation or theme is uh, is, is taking a chance. Is, is yes. taking a chance and, and, taking, and, and taking an angle in, in any field that you're in. For, uh, for instance, uh, like like she said, um, art or like um, or for instance, if you have if you have a chance with with, with with those who are privileged with any piece of equipment laying around, rather than, than just looking like walking past it any day, why like why don't you ask yourself um, why, why why don't I pick this up and, and try and, and try and like use it and and learn a skill and, and hone myself to a point where if an if an opportunity or chance comes up to use it. I can like every opportunity missed is is, is seriously it's it's a problem with, with with people my age especially. Yeah, and I can say mm -hmm. for him that uh, he has used my camera to teach himself how to do camera work. Yeah. He knows how to do video editing, but and he oh, taught himself. Yeah. 
he knows how to play the guitar from watching yeah. YouTube videos, you know, and things like and that. And also, yeah, and, and also, um, with with the part of, of taking a different angle, uh, apart from being into into games and and also studying ar architecture, I think it's it's very important to see that currently, currently, I'm I'm learning how to design buildings inside video games. Oh, yes. okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay. You will not design the one that will follow. I don't know <laughs> okay, go ahead. I remember when my son, he's now 20, when he was 10 years old, and he was finishing uh, primary school, so they were writing their career choices. As a parent, you know, I came for graduation. I was so happy I picked up the graduation book. I saw other people's children writing, they want to become doctor, lawyers, engineer, and behold, I saw my son's face, and he said he wants to become a footballer. <laughs> I swear to God. You see, maybe he almost had a nice time. I didn't know what I, ha I knew now. But believe me, I, I had a meltdown. I saw engineers, doctors, lawyers, waiting, waiting. Yeah, so you you want to go and be playing with oh, football. It's football. <laughs> and I think, it, honestly, I was, I was disappointed. And I think most parents at that time, I, I see things differently now. But at that time, I told myself, oh, no. so we want to raise a child who will go to school and become footballer. Like what? And be playing, not you. Yeah, and be playing. Be playing. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's the... and I remember he said, Did he, please, he wanted to go to a coaching academy. I said, for where? I said, my brother. Football. I think you can play football by the side, but you have to go and get a degree. Mm -hmm. And I remember also, in fact, he really, really loved football. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if I could go back in time, I think I would have supported him much more. Mm -hmm. Because now I realize these formal jobs that we all want our kids to become engineers, architects, mm -hmm. lawyers, waiting, yeah. waiting. Yeah. How many of them are actually practicing? That's yes, exactly. Talking to, yes, talking talking. To, actually talking to that. You know, you said at that time, even now, a lot of people still do that insist that our children study what we call the professional courses and then of course when they are through with school they want to work in government offices yes and we have a civil service for instance that is already over bloated right? we have an economy that is struggling but for those who have skills like she had mentioned earlier that little money that comes in on a daily basis there's dignity in labor in yeah, course. and now more than ever we need to realize that there is dignity in labor. Um, in the fashion industry, for instance, you find that most of the people who are involved are maybe they are just able to get out of secondary school, so they start to, you know, something to do. But in a few cases where you have graduates that go into the fashion industry, like I said, my daughter is a microbiologist by the time. Anyway. There is a difference yes. Mm -hmm. yes. in the way they do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're different from. So, we need to have a rethink that skill acquisition is it. Mm -hmm. That in the more developed clients, the emphasis is not on the government providing jobs, mm -hmm. but for us to have skills. For instance, if I make a dress for you and I said it's one fifty thousand for that dress for instance I don't tell me you charge one fifty thousand I, I dress. Know, it, it depends on who and what is it wedding dress a lot of things go but people make clothes for three million. Mm. Oh yes, yes. 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 something something uh, 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 or something you right you see I tell people I said you see that ready made Nakelo makeup Mm -hmm. yeah, true. No, 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 now you probably want to tell people, I wear only Gucci. Why can't we have those Gucci here in Nigeria? We can. We have them actually. We do. And so we need to encourage our younger ones, our children. Not everybody is academically inclined. Thank you. Very true. It doesn't mean that they are not intelligent. Understand your child. Know your child's strengths, and especially in the times we are in, guide your child along that path. Sure. Because let me tell you, I've just retired, like I said. I retired as a director. 
Am I a millionaire? No, I'm waiting to collect pension. After maybe 30 years, 30 something years in service, the skilled person will make that money I was making as a director. The skilled person will make it in one year. True. True. The fashion designer would make that money in one month. Mm. Yeah. And there is no retirement. Yeah. You get to a level, you now employ people and then you supervise them. You are not retiring. Okay. You know, um, a lot of times I, I always say that we get um, you know, unemployed because we place wrong priorities on certain jobs. If you look at a society, it's pretty much for me, like my fingers, they're not equal. But the one that is the smallest does not mean it's least important. All of them are important. So I come into this place, there is supposed to be a cleaner, and I'm wearing my, what do you call it, a Gucci? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I come in, it's dirty. I wouldn't want to dirty that Gucci. You see, that cleaner becomes very imperative mm -hmm. at that point. If you are in, in a place and you find out that once they say um, where can I buy ABCD you always quick to say let me look for it it simply means that you cannot actually be to go person for that organization and you can be a go person for a lot of people so you begin to be an influencer or you begin to be that person I need to ask for something I tell a lot of young people you like to Google on your phones. Why don't you make use of it when you come into a place? If your boss needs A, B, C, D, have that answer readily because it's on your Google now. How do I access A, A B, C, D? You have it. So that makes you very dependent. You know, people depend on you, so to speak. If you find out that you're a cleaner, I'd like to go back to the janitor job because I know somebody who is earning more than 200000 just doing cleaning. Two hundred thousand per day, per month, month, per week. Per month. That's what I calculated, because he told me he charges to clean an apartment of three bedroom, five thousand air. And the whole apartment for the day. The whole apartment for the day. It's rather cheap. Yeah, five thousand air. You know, no, that's the average person. I know there's some cleaning agencies that clean for twenty five thousand in Abuja. You know, but this person wants a lot of money. So he cleans your place a day, you pay 5000 And you have more people coming. And you have more people coming, mind you. So he cleans like 25 apartments. 24, sorry, apartments in a month. So 5000 times uh, 30 days, if he has to do it for 30 days. That's 5000 times uh, 24, then times uh, 30, peop uh, 30 days. That's, that's a whole lot of money. That's a whole, whole, lot, it's a whole lot of, lot of money. Done. Meanwhile, like, he does not clean every day. He says some places is twice a week, some places uh, three times a week. Uh, especially where there are bachelors, mm -hmm. you know, is uh, maybe once a week even. But where they have a lot of small, small children, he has to do it every day. The same person tells me that the same environment where he's doing cleaning, he washes all their cars and he charges them 10,000 naira per car. Yeah, that's for the much. In a month. Okay, so, per month. Per, per month. month. Okay. Yes. Per month. So, no, if I'm going to wash my car in a car uh, wash, it's mm -hmm. one five. Yeah. And then somebody has a well, times one month, month that's uh, 45,000. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, somebody is paying me. He charges 10,000. 10,000 a month. No, no, okay, it's a month. I thought it was per wash. And that, that's, that's, that's aside from the house. That's aside from the house cleaning. The same person does laundry every weekend. So, the guy has stinking money. And we are here looking at him and saying, oh, Yusuf does not have certificates. But if I may come in, you know, you said something about offering some lady a cleaning opportunity that mm -hmm. she turned down mm -hmm. because she said she's not a morning person. Mm -hmm. I think it's critical for people to know who they are. Mm -hmm. There's a very strong likelihood that that woman's strengths do not lie in cleaning. And she truly is this kind of person who does not wake up early. But that doesn't mean that she could not apply herself in something else and do it very very well too sure. i have found that for quite a number of people who seem to constantly be waiting for handouts if you take a deep dive into what's going on there are some self-esteem issues going on there too Absolutely. many people lack confidence in themselves many people have been 
um, socialized to believe that because I have not attained this level of education, because I, did don't, because I didn't read medicine, law, architecture, accounting, engineering, pharmacy, and all this, I'm low-key, useless, you know, self-esteem issues, lack of confidence, and all these play into hold people back. Now, sometimes you see somebody that has great potential and seems to be wasting away. Sometimes it takes a word to build that person up to wake the person up to an inner re reality of who they are. Recently, I stumbled upon a video of um, Rihanna. I'm sure we all know Rihanna now, mm -hmm. the musician. Mm -hmm. Singing. She was doing an a cappella of one of Mariah Carey's uh, songs. Then a hero comes along. Mm -hmm. It was awful. It was terrible. It was bad. That it was, <laughs> no, I mean, like, no, 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 seriously. I'm not even yabbing the girl. I could carry that song better. But guess who's the billionaire? It's Rihanna, mm -hmm. not Maria Carey. Mm -hmm. Because in addition to marginally knowing how to sing, the girl got a hold of the business end of how the entertainment business. industry works. works. And that's where she focused her strengths. So that the rest is sorted out in computers, new mm -hmm. auto-tune, mm -hmm. by the time instrumentals are added, everything. Mm -hmm. she said. But when it comes to, oh, I put Maria Carey to sing as a vocalist, put Rihanna to sing as, a voc as, a, as vocalists, even this other lady, Jello, can't sing to save her life. Really? Yes. If you ask, just sing. Don't use computer to repair anything. Don't go and put, just sing with your natural voice. Jello can't sing to save her life. Rihanna can't sing to save her life. You know what you're saying? We're actually giving me Beyonce can sing. I, I used to think I couldn't no, sing. No, seriously, I was shocked. Like I was say, it, was, it, was a, it was a TikTok video. I actually downloaded it. That's how shocked I was. Rihanna can't sing. Okay, okay. she can't sing. Okay, okay. She was getting her. She was getting. She was playing around. No, she wasn't playing around. She was on stage. She was on stage. See that there are four big vocalists: Whitney Houston, Dead and Gone, Mariah Carey, Celine Dion, and the one other person of this of this particular generation. You cannot reach some of the notes they they reach. Yeah, that's true. You understand? Then the you know the mid-level ones beyonce who, who, who. It's, not, it's not just those my best friend rihanna the dancing and the area but when you know, a lot of them actually use them uh, thing with your so normal explain, knowing what the the nitty-gritty for your survival in your business is but, so having the confidence, confidence and <laughs> being able to carry it off and know the business end of things matters yes, yes. okay I want to talk to this issue that you just said about maybe lack of self-confidence and all that and we should also look at another side of it like it gives you a sense of discipline i would say i'm not an early riser there is also in our society a sense of entitlement Thanks, well sure. that, that, that for me i was more you know that. a sense of entitlement so we have this person who would come to you let me tell you what happened a few days ago because i'm preparing for a runway show Coming up this week, a runway show. Yes. Oh wow! The coming fashion up this show. fashion show yes, of your show. house. Yes. Wow. Oh, when is it happening? Yeah. It's happening on Saturday. Okay. So are we all going to? <laughs> We're invited, right? You definitely. <laughs> the are. idea is for you to come and spend your money. <laughs> 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 come, come, come. The most the Mary, 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 Mary is a place. Mary House. Mary. Mary House. Mary House. Okay, Mary House. Okay. So, we have a lot that we need to show there. This guy came around the ground and he said, um, do you have work for me to do? I said, see, we have a lot here. We are struggling to meet up with time. But these are our specifications. You must work with a pattern, not freehand. You must do these things. So are you ready to do this? And then we'll guide you through so that we maintain our standard. And he said, uh, uh, Madam, I, I know if we do that one, uh, as part I be, I know if we do that one. <laughs> well, we will guide you, you just do it according to what you say. You just find me transport money, make what you go there. <laughs> Rather than make the yeah. effort, he is a tailor, yeah. mm. make the effort, make that little change. He doesn't even have the transport fare. Mm. That. So he wants to be given transport fare, and you see so many like that. And Very that true. sense of yeah. entitlement. And the that. humanity. Okay. And you know, in Nigerians. Nigerians. You know the humanity in Nigerians. 
you don't want to see your fellow person suffer yeah. so yeah. he's hungry give him something yeah. he can't go home give him transport fare. tomorrow he's coming back so a lot of that i feel like sure i feel like apart from from these two two uh, problems i also feel a third one a third one that should help should help people mentally also is that sometimes you have to fake it to make it exactly for instance for instance if you're if you're you fake it to make it yes you make, make it to you make it okay to make it because if, if if like for instance if you have uh, if you have um if you have giants around giants in different industries or giants in the industry you want to go into if you if you, if you go in if, if you go in and, and and you just show them that oh i'm like i'm i'm small fry or i am I am yeah. your prey. I am your prey to, to, to I am your prey and you're my hunter. They will they will they will eat you up. So advantage. yes. They'll they'll take advantage of you. They will they'll look down on you. So you have to keep so you have to, to tell yourself mentally, even even though you're not a giant yet, you have to, to tell yourself I'm a giant. So if I if I walk into this room I will I will own this room even even though I don't have enough money to win it or anything. So yes, I would come from a different angle. I would say I would look for a mentor. Mm. There's always a giant and there are always people who are stacking up. Yes. You are not you're a giant, you are not a giant. Yes. Go work with a giant so that you can learn from the giant and over time you also become a giant. Okay, let's quickly touch base with some of our uh, uh, online uh, guests or this uh, contributors. Someone says yeah. Uh, thank you. I enjoy your program, but I want to ask: in Nigeria, I think it's close to what you said. If you do not have certificates, even when you start a business, people do not have respect for you. How do you go about it? No, there are so many people that don't have certificates. Yeah. It's not about. I I I get where you're coming from, and that is why, just like Mary said, there's always this need for you to. There's, there's no harm having that certificate. By all means, have it, especially the first degree. It really helps. Because like she has said, there's always a clear difference between the person that just started sewing and somebody who is already highly educated that decides, okay, I also want to... That you see a clear difference. But that doesn't mean that you should use it as an excuse to hold yourself back. I don't already have a certificate, so people will not patronize me. The most important thing is... How well are you doing what you are yeah. doing? You know, there was a time somebody, a service provider, um, pissed me off so bad. And I couldn't see anything because she's so good. And I knew that I would have to patronize her again. <laughs> yes. So I told my daughter, I said, whatever you are doing, learn how to do it so well that you can insult your customers and they'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> because that's how pissed off I was. <laughs> but the most important thing is, how well okay. are you doing this thing you are doing, no matter how small it okay, is? Okay, my time is almost not with me. Yeah. Jesse, somebody is asking if I want to go into game, gaming show or gaming uh, business, what is what are the basic things I need? Basic things. Okay. Internet. Internet, Internet in Nigeria. Uh, okay, it's not for those in some villages like my village. Uh, yes. Uh, Internet. You need you need obviously a device the, 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 like the platform you want to play on. Uh, if you want to, to play on, on PC or computers or laptops, you obviously need a computer or laptop. If you want to play on, on, on a mobile device, you need a tablet or, or a phone that's, that's capable to carry the game you want to play. Like, what about the skills? What kind of skills do I need to have? The skills you need to have. The skills you, you need to have are, are, are the skills based on the game. If you want to, if you want to be competitive in, in a fighting game, for instance, mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to learn uh, when... Tapandi. No, <laughs> yeah, that, it was more you, game. you you need to to okay the, the most important skill for for every competitive or professional player of a game is is when to do what you want to do and like and like so so you, you have to do what you want to do at, at the right time and, and you have to, to know when you want to do it inside the game so yes just just you have, you have to perfect your understanding in the game so that's okay. the highest skill all right, yes. it's uh, it's good enough, and uh, our time is almost up. But let me quickly touch base with uh, Coach Didi. Your final words on ensuring that people don't beg you, rather we earn money. It's like that part is also a has to honestly you don't start a scheme when you don't think you can do better, you can offer better. That's why you're you okay with taking from from other people. So let's believe in ourselves and try to do something for ourselves. Well. Okay, and uh, man, there's dignity in labor. I'm a lawyer and I'm a tailor. 
And I, I did not tell anybody, but I'm going to say it now that Mary is 60 years today. Oh, today is yeah. 6 yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay, you. Okay, so I will just post this to you. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> All right, shout out words from uh, Devon. Well, get yourself doing something. Do not feel as if uh, you, you you don't have anything to offer. You have something to offer. Learn how to do it well. Monetize it. All right, so whatever you know how to do, you do it well. I'll go back to the real basis. Those of us who watch Coming to America, Eddie Murphy wanted to get a girl. And he said, think of garbage, think of Eddie Murphy. You know? He was proud being a garbage person, even though he was a king. So no matter where you find yourself, don't think that I'm not good enough. You can actually make your office as the security guy under the tree very cozy. In fact, when you come around, um, when people see you, instead of dashing you one there, they dash you 1,000 because of your courage. Your courage speaks a whole lot about you. So let's get dignity in level, like you said, and find out what you can do. Everybody is killed. Because I believe that we're all created in God's image and likeness. And God has a lot of skill. Take one from him, if not two. Ciao, ciao. See you tomorrow.